Santa, Harold, uh, good afternoon. Could be so much I mean, hi, Kino. Um, uh, yeah, first things first, uh, a bit of housekeeping before I uh, introduce the, the speakers. Um, I just want to ensure that um, those of you who are using the translation um, know um, exactly uh, what you should be doing. So for, for the Welsh English interpretation, if you can find the global the globe icon rather and select English. If you're on a tablet or mobile, this may be appearing under three dots and the word more. Um, and obviously Welsh speakers do not need to select anything in terms of interpretation. Um, so I'm going to hope and assume that uh, everything is in order in that context. And um, I'll turn to the Welsh. I'll be then Kavlechi, Sikarhai, Borda, Kavithi, and Gwithia, Ach Bochin Hapis, Gedachunu. I mean, now we, yeah, carry on line and a Gamraigi either. Uh, well, but just around Kavunyad, um, couple of Betheris, Iwades, Kovioch board, a session of Kavi Recordio. Um, be more the Hihabid, Gobin, Question, Troy, a QA, Sivik Gonaras, our wee lod a screen, a wedding, but I and Kenig, a question in our ear, Shradwir, Kavunir Heddy. Um, yeah, Adanani or an Kadu Tid, you know. Um, but the other eagle green on Hina, save who uh, Dr. Hugh Williams, you're on Enu, and you take the sound we and brief skull Kadid, uh, Deon Gamagvenin on Hevid and Dalithiar Thronyet, Thronyet and Diddle, Kundi Thassel, and the Dori and Vaud and uh, Kasanyad uh, or Hedoch, Ak and Vachiano, Athik and Rachiali Hevid, brief skull Kadid, Ar Pushkar. Uh, academy head uh, yeah, we sure bore him and ballad to he wedi cal, um, Ruyeth go hellaith or Javadithe Afankia, see them by heen vasle and Dangos, um, pa more hublig vasle, a hostel who sell Ilkasanyad or Hedoch. Ah, uh, well, man for the heavy, my main, um, yeah, I'll work here faith. Board uh, testing and need more amruyal <coughs> aboni have it in the middle of session. Um, ah, well, more though, was there, I, um, yeah, be spout back or throw the natur into the agweld, beef mar, uh, punkama, and and kamel or an amatebion. A corana session, my head you, Denny, a mindy board and cassassi headoch, get a yechid, a quid in the yith. A dai bapir diddorol dros ben, yn dod o sabwyntio chydig yn wahanol ym eisrhwyd na fydd angen i fi i uh, adnabod neu uh, pwysleisio y cysylltiadau ar eich rhan chi. A falle yn gyffredinol mae e'n werth, falle myfyriol i'w faint neu nodi yn dyfe uh, pa mor gynolog y gall yr cysyniad yma o iaith fod o sabwynt um, heddwch yn ehangach. Dyn ni yn byw mewn cyfnod wrth gwrs sydd yn argyfwng um, hinsawdd gweithio'r modd, ond mae hefyd modd byddwn ni'n darle i awgrymu bod e hefyd yn, yn oes ni'n gyfnod o argyfwng ieithyddol o sabwynt yn nifer o ieithoedd lleafrifol, ieithoedd brydorol um, sydd yn uh, dirwyn i, i ben felly yn uh, ni'n cysgu um, mae'r ieithwedd o gwmpas y pethau mae'n anodd iawn, ond wrth gwrs mae Yr hyn sydd yn digwydd i nifer fawr o ieithoedd ar draws y byd yn adlewyrchu y themau eraill yna sydd yn trwytho y drafodaeth o gwmpas heddwch os abwynt gormes, uh, gormes economaidd. Yr hyn sydd yn digwydd i um, amgylchedd nifer o, o bobl a phobloedd a grwpiau ieithyddol uh, ledled y byd. Felly, ond sabwynt i o leia, dwi'n meddwl bod y cyswllt yma rhwng iaith a heddwch ar gwastad byd eang yn un hynod hynod bwysig. Iawn, digon gen ni, dwi'n mynd i droi at ein cyflwynydd cyntaf, sef Angharad, Angharad Higgins, Angharad yn fyfyrrau PhD yn y ganolfan hynneiddio arloesol yn Prif Ysgol Abertawe, yn ymchwilio i brofiadau Sradwyr Cymraeg. Hyn sy'n byw mewn gofal yn ei astudiaeth ansoddol, mae Angharad yn defnyddio dull mapio bywyd, ble mae cyfranogwyr yn myfyrio ar ei perthynas dagiaeth ar draws i cwrs bywyd a sut y gallai hyn bod wedi newid 
pan symud yn nhw i ofal. Yn y gystal ag ymgymryd o'i PhD, mae anghael ag weithio fel dyr trwy penaeth ansawd a diogelwch bod fi echyd prifysgol bai ab y tawe, ac mae hefyd yn aelod o fwrdd rheoli cymdeithas tai caredig, gan fi dros pum na neddarigen o brofio dy weithio y mae si echyd a lledu a chymorth. Trwy hyn, mae di gweld yn union gyrchol sut y gall iaith bod yn rhwystr ac yn alliogwr i ofal sy'n canolbwyntio ar yr unigolyn. Felly, croeso cynnes i ti angharad ydych ymlaen yn fawr i glywech chi'n cyflwyno, ond eich bod gynnwch chi ychydig o sleidiau i rhan i gyda ni. A mae'n dyn ni, bantach chi. Diolch, reit, gydawch chi wedi'r gobeithio cael rhain lan i bawb. Reit, reit, a dwi'n dyn bynnol falle ar hwyn yn gweithio sych chi meth i gweld nhw. Ie, gweld nhw, dyna ni, maen nhw wedi mynd mewn i'r sioe sleidiau, felly gobeithio fydd pethau yn iawn, mae rhyw bod os nad ydy'r sleidiau yn symud ymlaen. Great, diolch. Fel, uff, na fe, yn syth mewn, fel meddai hi'w angharad, dwi'n angharad higgins, a dwi'n edrych ar profiadau siaradwyr Cymraeg hi'n sy'n byw o fewn cartrefu gofal. So, falle fo chi'n meddwl byst o hwnna'n ymwneud â heddwch a iechyd? Wel, dwedodd seir yr ysire, pan oedd hi'n comisiynydd hyn bobl, fel yr gair cartref o lygu rhywbeth arbennig. Lle gobeithio ni, y fydd yn llawn cyfeill garwch cariad a chwerthyn, Os mae'n blaen i'n byw pan i'n hyn, neu pan mor fregus ydyn ni, bod ni'n gyd am deimlo ein bod yn cael ein parchu am gwerthfarogi ac allu gwneud y pethau sy'n bwysig i ni. So mae heddwch a iechyd a teimlo'n gartrefol yn clwm mae gilydd a lle ni'n cael un heb y llall. Ydych chi fi symud, dwi'n siŵr chi'n llyw... Ydy pan chi'n gweld rhyw bar di ar draws y sleidiau ma, neu jyst bi'n siŵr. Mae'n iawn gyda fi. O'n y beth? Mae'n iawn gyda fi. Ydych jyst fi o ddau. Sori, mae ddau o'ch fi. Mae'n iawn gyda fi rhoi rhywun yn rhoi neges yn y Q&A os ydych na'r broblem, ma'n harad, ond heroedd hyn yn bryd os neu bryd i gweithelli. Gre, diolch. So, pan yn i'n meddwl am y cartre gofal, am eiliad, lle cyn i'n pawb jyst meddwl, be fe sy'n bwysig i ni pyta ni'n symud mewn i'n cartre gofal, a ni fel pwy yn i heddi a be ni'n bwriadu neud dros y penwthnos, be nithwn ni bore ma, be nithwn ni ddoi pwyd i ni, be sy'n bwysig i ni. Falle dealltwriaeth, falle hynaniaeth rhywun yn gweld ni fel pwy ydyn ni. Teimlo yn ddiogel, cael trwy le amser yn neud, be sy'n bwysig i ni. Mwynhau, cael caredigrwydd. A dydyn ni ddim yn wahanol iawn i'r bobl sy'n byw mewn cartrefu gofal heddi. Mae be ni eisiau heddi, yr un peth falle byddwn ni eisiau os ni angen yn nes mlaen yn ein bywydau. Dwi wedi clico rhywbeth. Dyma ni, dwi'n mlaen. So nawr dwi eisiau mynd â ni ar daith o fore gwynt a nos. So mynd ar taith diwrnod rhywun o fewn cartre gofal i edrych ar y pwyntiau yn ystod y dydd ble mae iaith a diwylliant yn bwysig i rhywun a pa wahaniaeth maen nhw'n neud. So dyma ni'n dechrau, dyna ni'n deffro mewn cartre gofal, ac o'r llygaid a mae'n sŵn o'n cwmpas ni, falle fo'n a sŵn troli sy'n llawn te yn cael ei symud, falle fo'n a radio'n chwarae, bobl yn clebrand, yn cael sgwrs dechrau dydd. A sut beth bysau hwnna os oedd yr iaith yn estron? So yr eiliad ni'n agor llygaid, dyna ni'n mynd diall cweit sy'n beth sy'n ymlaen. A dwi eisiau chi'n meddwl na'r am, sut dechrau di hwnna i'r dydd? A wedyn, dyn ni wedi codi, a mae rhywun yn dy mewn i darparu gofal personol. A pan ni'n meddwl am gofal personol, mae iaith a'r perthynas yna rhwng y person sy'n derbyn gofal a'r gofalwr yn holl bwysig. Ac o fewn y llenyddiaeth, mae'n y disgrifiad pwerus iawn o fenyw sy'n dod o'i ran sy'n siarad ffasu, a mae dydy i gofalwr hi ddim yn siarad ffasu, a mae'r gofalwr am iddi cael cawod. A dyma mae'r gofalwr yn dymewr, yn dderau nawr, amser codi, dderau gyw'n ni cael cawod. A mae'r ddynes yn dweud, na, dwi mi lle. Ond sy'n syniad y gofalwr, sy'n mae hi'n mynd yn ei flaen, yn dweud dderau nawr, yn dweud o'r dŵr arnod, dderau matred, gyw'n ni cawod. A mae'r fenyw sy'n siarad ffasu, sy'n dweud, na, dim fi, dim nawr, dwi ddim yn bwriadu cael cawod heddi. A mae'r sefyllfa yma yn cynddeiro, achos 
mae'r fenyw sy'n siarad ffasu yn siarad ar wal, ond achos os dim syniad ar gofalod be mae'n dweud, a, a pan ni'n meddwl am gofal personol, pwy mae'r sensau ti fyddi hwnna, mae cael ein diall a cael ein parchu a gallu cyfathrebu yn holl bwysig hwnna. So, ni wedi codi, ni wedi gwisgo cacao drwy siap a dyma ni'n mewn i cabrecwast. Nawr, dwi wedi mi wneud a, a iaith falle, ond mae bwyd lot i'n wneud a diwylliant a, a gweld y person fel un i golyn. So, dwedodd eisiau, man, pan oedd e'n sgwennu am cymunedau lleofrifol yng Ngogledd America, falle mae bwyd yw'r cysylltiad olaf a bywyd blinorol rhywun. So, pan mae popeth arall wedi toddi, Efallai mae arogleion a blas o'r cyswll terfynol yna. A dwi'n siŵr rydyn ni gyd i bod rhywle ble ni wedi byta bwyd sy'n angyfarwydd i ni. Efallai mewn bwyti, efallai gyda ffrindiau neu ar gwyliau, efallai fod bach o nofl ti yn eidau, a mae fe'n um, diddorol i blas i bwyd i'r wahanol. Ond os na fe'n ni'n neud trwy dydd pob dydd, efallai fe'n sy'n yn diflasu, neu fe fyddwn na bod rhywun eisiau i frecwas, os mae rhywun yn hoffi i wedi frecwas, a dyma'n prwn sy'n ar gael beth to. Mae hwnna'n neud i'r rhywun yn teimlo llai fel unigolyn, a mae'n cael effaith ar rhywun o'ch mynd i gweld pob dydd. A wedyn dyma ni lan, nid i gwisgo neud cabrecwas, a ni'n cerdded mewn i'r lolfa. A mae sy'n weddau ar wal sŵn yna o fewn o lolfa, am gwnaed i rhywun teimlo fel fod nhw'n perthyn, a fel fod nhw'n adre, neu fod nhw'n ddieithr. A... Sgwennodd um, sod yma'n gall can radio teledu helpu creu cefndir sain sy'n helpu i bum bobl teimlo'n gartrefol. Fyddwn si neu i ddieithrio nhw, a dwi'n siŵr fod i gyd falle wedi bod ar gwyliad i rhoi'r teledu mlaen mewn iaith wahanol, a falle fod yna rhyw opera sebon yn mynd yn ei flaen. Ac yn ni'n cael rhyw syniad o beth sy'n digwydd o gwynebau bobl a beth sy'n digwydd ar y sgrin, Ond dyn ni'n methu chwerthyn ar y jokes, a sefyllai dyn ni ddim yn diall nos dydy o'r iaith ddim gyda ni. A dyn ni'n methu cymryd rhan yn llwyr yn beth sy'n digwydd gyda'r plot oherwydd iaith. So mae fe'n anodd iawn i rhywun teimlo'n gartrefol, os mae popeth o gwmpas nhw'n ddieith ar fy. A wedyn falle fod bobl yn fwyta bygol i trwy'r amser ar ei ben i hunan, fe nôl i'r stafell, neu cael lawr, neu... Um, Fel disgrifiwyd gyna yn cael bath o alltid mewnol, so rhywun yn mynd mewn at ei hunan. A peryg o wedyn ni, os yna gos iaith cyffredin, dyna ni, yw mae fe'n fwy anodd beth i datblygu cyfeillgarwch a bobl eraill. A mae cael cyfeillgarwch a ffrindiau yn bwysig i ni smots ble ni'n byw beth yw oed tra ni, mae cael ffrindiau a bobl sy'n diall ni yn bwysig. Mae yna sôn yn y llenyddiaeth, mae yna esiampl o fenyw yn dod o'r India sy'n mynd i byw yn Australia a mynd i byw yn cartre gofal as mae merch yn Australia. A mae'n symud i'n cartre gofal as neb yna gyda cefndir yn debyg iddi, as neb wedi cael profiadau bywyd yn debyg iddi. A mae'r fenyw mynd yn unig a mae'n mewn at ei hunan yn digalon. A wedi mae'i ferch yn disgrifio o wahaniaeth mae'n neud pan mae'r ddynes yma yn symud i cartre lle mae bobl gyda hanes debyg iddi, a mae'n blodeio. Mae'n blodeio, achos mae'r iaith gan ni mae bobl yn gwybod i hanes a mae peth yn cyffredin, mae fel lot haws iddi wneud ffrindiad a bobl eraill. Gysyn haro gynneb, pan oedd Dewi'n siarad um, yn dyfynnu Albertio, yn dweud am unigrwydd, pan mae rhywun wedi rhannu o'r byd. A dyma be mae iaith yn gallu wneud o fewn um, cartrefu gofal, os Jyst dim iaith cyffredin, mae rhywun yna, ond maen nhw wedi rhannu o'r byd o'i gwmpas. Ac o fewn cartrefu gofal, mae yna grŵp sy'n dioddau um, fel dweud y saith, fel dybl wami, bron, a bobl sy'n efo dimensiau neu nam cof arall. Ble mae'r rhwystrau gyd sy'n dod gyda'r dimensiau mewn sylleri diall beth sy'n digwydd yn cwmpas, gallu cyfathrebu, gallu mynegu am osiannau, Mae'r rhain yna, a wedyn ar ben hynny, mae dyna ni iaith a'r rhwystrau ieithyddol. A mae hwn yn gallu wneud sefyllfa o'r bobl yn fregus iawn. Mae fe'n gallu effeithio ar asesiadau bobl. Mae fe'n gallu golygu fod teiliodd yn prederu am yr ansawdd gofal. A mae yna'n enghraifft am, am Kong o teiliodd o De Korea sy'n byw yn America sy'n 
the Minister of Gofal, Tanrait, are a Jewish Pamar Fuin and Sal Yao, a husband of a gweld of problem, Emma. I will let us see and the Giatu and Vodlot for Manegian Olus, also Snaben Diatu and Sidma Mordway, Nadrim Shakawad, and it with Vasil Besedu and Unguidi, Nay Taroachan, a wedding, Mana Risk, a Seruin and Kal, a Medigineth So the I'm just trying to keep back now. Well, none of them will. Do we take a seat? I'm careful to go over our jobs of lads. Um, and governing no one that party at the start will come back. I cannot question the governors, you know. Of both on COVID, I sit provided the start will come back when a careful to call and a study to learn as well. Allow us to slide with this when he and Gary and Obed went on. So or Pedro de Pedro a tabard. My right did it last year, my niece. Who must be a shard with Sisneg? Someone of Hib Gweld Vasse, a Guahaneth Mavane, does Maruin Camrag, and Boo and Carter Degan Rag, as Dim Tailey, Dim and Welber and Domain, one who hibbed of Nadio Yaithu Gubal Vasse, one who goes on Pereg and Ekroy, and Rai, as he Hib Gweld near Didwade, now, who must be a shard with Sisneg? But in Perth. My Irish, where did Gweld and one who did wait? Liam, Marlink, Nadar Gamina, where did Calefes? Try at all, I cut every goval, Kimmer Staff and Shara Kamrak, so many degrees are effed on Thai effed for her with the eye. I mean, any Hanos seem dressed down at a wounded weight. Only one service user um, speaks Welsh, and nothing's been said regarding Welsh speaking in relation to Covid. I'm Rani Vedo Pumarano, Marduivlan, Dweth, Madi Bodhi, Ruin Vel, Noor, and Gorbot Trail, your true deed, poor deed, and Shara the eye through an arash. So, our two of the deeds, I mean, I don't know our provia de deeds, claim a property team on Estron at the ether, a back and hang a fortress, or Agor Lugat, Tan Miniguelli. My son made many cartridge goval and the Guidiad are with Ocali Auni Ruin. Gas Amsal Bowage Ruin, Guesha, Nay Newid Irguetha Ruin. A by Yais, I was a duishant and a key destiny man, Gathi wouldn't bond. Rhwng bywyd blaenorol rhywun a teimlo'n gael trefol mewn gofal. So be ma hwn i gyd yn golygu? Wel, ma hwn golygu, dwi'n meddwl, ma'n angen ymchwil pellach i profiadau siaradwyr Cymraeg o fewn cartrefi gofal. Ac yn myfyrio ar beth sydd cael ei drafod heddi yn da siaradwyr eraill, ma angen ymchwil i profiadau siaradwyr ieithoedd eraill hefyd o fewn cartrefi gofal. Falle beth yw'r rhwystrau i nôm um, Some in Melny Cartavia, go but would have an option in our team of our cartridge and I renew. Am I an model? See what you provin a faith you all your honey get our sector. Um, in eight pet and house, moving sector, dan strain, moving sector, Clemon Calinano, the recruit, Adam Lani staff. So in an eight model, um, Firdo Guithio, seen how that can a faith you all evolve. So Cyn i fi gadael, dwi jyst eisiau yn rhoi bach o hysbys i'r recrutio. Os dych chi neu rhywun chi'n nabod, yn byw mewn cartre gofal yng Nghymru, Siara Cymraeg, eisiau cymryd rhan yn fymchwil wedyn cysylltiwch â mi os gwelwch yn dda. So dyna'r gleiaeth bach gloi chi. Ond dyna ni, diolch yn fara, diolch yn mae cyfle i Siara ydych chi heddi. Diolch. Yn ei diolch yn fawr, angharad, oedd yna yn... Um... Ddiddorol iawn ac yn oglisiol ac os gaiweidodd yr ffyrf ysgwrs yn tywys ni trwy ddwrnod rhywun mewn gofal yn, yn effeithio dros ben o safbwynt ie. Yeah, Ceisio uniaethu a, a deall y, y profiad a phrofiad wrth gwrs fi'n siŵr fydd nifer fawr iawn o hon am ni yn byw trwy ddi um, um, mewn rhyw cyfnod o'n bywyd e ni. So diolch, diolch y fawr i chi hwnna fi'n siŵr fydd e di um, yeah, cymell digon o Fe fyrdo de ar gallu am felly gwestiwn, felly uh, peidio chi'n mynd yn rhywle yn dy fe. Um, a gael ni droi nawr at uh, y gwestiwn nesa, so um, bea neu mae ma Dr. Adlam yn, yn feddig ac yn gweithio ar sail amser llawn, y uh, mae ymchwil dulliau cymysg yn ysgol feddygaeth prifysgol a batawe a London School of Hygiene Tropical Medicine. Ac fel cymrawd ymchwil er anrhydedd ym Llifysgol Lerpwl, 
Mae diddor debe ymchwil yn ymwneud ar berthynas rhwng mido trawsladol, ffwydriad a chysweithloches yn benodol, ymgysylltiad cymunedol, psychiatric diwylliannol a phollesu ag ymchwil iechyd meddwl byd eian. Mae di arwain a chymryd rhan mewn sawl prosiect ar ianwyd a chomisiynwyd gan y sefydliad cenedlaethol dros ymchwil iechyd. Ymchwil iechyd a gofal Cymru, sefydliad cochren ac adran iechyd y dinas unedig. Felly, croeso mawr i chi, um, a warm welcome. I believe you also have some slides to share, is that right? Lovely. Yes. Okay, I'll mute myself and uh, yeah, sit back and enjoy the talk. Thank you very much, um, Hugh. Um, I'll just share my slides. And if you can please confirm that you can see them, that would be great. Yeah, so um, they've come up and yeah, they're now in um, slideshow mode. So I think we're okay. I'll, I'll give great. you a um, heads up as it were if, uh, if the slides don't move with you. Okay, well, thank you very much. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Rubia and I'm the co-applicant and study manager for HERE2. Um, thank you very much again for this opportunity to present, uh, to discuss health, place and language in the context of our project, the health experiences of asylum seekers and refugees. Um, our project examines um, their health experience in Wales and how well their interpretation needs are met. So, and this is a project which is a collaboration between Swansea University, Public Health Wales, British Red Cross and Displaced People in Action. <clears throat> So I would like to present a few verses from JJ Bola, who is a London-based poet, educator, former refugee from the Congo, and has been a supporter, supporter of the UNHCR, the UN Refugee Agency. Sorry, just to let you know, Rabia, we're not um, hearing the volume. Oh, do you want you want me to turn up the volume? Oh well, no. I mean, if you're happy for us just to read off the 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 screen, that's fine. I was just wondering in case you expected it to be um, for us to be able to hear as well. Yes, yes, uh, I do expect people to hear, but so you can't hear it. Um, not at the moment, no. Um, okay. Um, the I... problem might be when you press share screen when the window pops up right at the bottom. There's a tick box option for share sound. Yes. But if you want to try that again and then press the video, it should work. Thank you. That was brilliant. You, you immediately figured out what I had done wrong. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. How it feels to be chased out of her. Is that better? You can yeah. hear that. Well yeah, can hear. Thank you. Imagine how it feels to be chased out of home. To have your grip ripped, loosened from your fingertips, something you so dearly held on to. Like a lover's hand that slips when it is pulled away, you are always reaching. My and I remember when we first stepped off the plane. Everything was foreign, unfamiliar, uninviting. Even the air in my lungs left me short of breath. We came here to find refuge. They called us refugees, so we hid ourselves in their language until we sounded just like them, changed the way we dressed to look just like them, made this our home until we lived just like them and began to speak of familiar faces, the girl next door who'd eventually grow up to be. I think that's about enough. This is a three minute long poem and I don't think it will be taken well if I shared the whole thing, but if you do get a chance, do look it up on YouTube. It's, it's a very moving poem and I think um, the verses that I've chosen do drive a certain point home. My father would speak of home. Reaching. Go to... Sorry, yes. So a way to understand peace is through its absence. A number of studies show that countries often sanctuary to people seeking asylum sometimes end up perpetuating different forms of violence. Re-traumatization of refugees or asylum seekers when they have to go through the asylum process is something which is well documented. Now, violence can take on many different forms, just like uh, Hugh was mentioning earlier that peace also takes on different forms. And so 
for example, there's structural violence um, for people with a refugee and asylum seeker, seeking background, where they can have difficulty in accessing healthcare. There can be cultural violence, which uh, feeds into their access of healthcare. So, for example, narratives from, say, the media or TV shows. Um, that diminish or conceal the suffering or dehumanize, criminalize, or scapegoat minorities. And then there's interpersonal violence, um, your regular physical attacks, psych psychological violence, and the direct violence, the violence which is perpetuated on the self, like self-harming and or drug abuse. Now, drug abuse, of course, in refugees and asylum seekers is quite low um, as compared to the regular population, but they are vulnerable. Um, and they do have certain uh, life experiences that makes them vulnerable to uh, to uh, leave them open to some mental health challenges like drug abuse. So this slide, um, it's an infographic that I got from the WHO website on migration and health in the European region. And even though they've said migrants, a lot of their um, work is on refugees and asylum seekers in that document. So I just want to briefly show you the kind of challenges or the health challenges that asylum seekers and refugees have when they enter a European country. So the most frequently problems, frequent problems that newly arrived refugees might have is accidental, uh, energy, uh, uh, accidental injuries, hypothermia, burns, gastrointestinal disease, cardiovascular events, pregnancy and delivery related complications, diabetes and hypertension. And of course, funneling that down even further, female res refugees and migrants face uh, very specific challenges, particularly maternal, newborn and child health, sexual, reproductive health and violence. And this is an exposure, I guess, as I've mentioned before, that that there are risks associated with population movements. So there's an increase in psychosocial disorders, reproductive health problems, higher newborn mortality, drug abuse, nutrition disorders, alcoholism, and exposure to violence, which increases their vulnerability to non-communicable diseases. So this is, um, on the basis of this, um, we developed uh, this, uh, we, uh, our group at Swansea University worked on this report with Public Health Wales, which is commissioned by Public Health Wales. It was called Health Experiences of Asylum Seekers and Refugees in Wales. My colleagues, uh, Josie uh, Nichol, uh, Nicholson, may, what, must have talked about this report earlier. Now, as, as I mentioned earlier, there isn't a lot of research which is available uh, on asylum seekers and refugees when it comes to Britain, there is some sparse knowledge. So this report was actually quite significant in trying to map what their health needs were. And what this report showed is that language barriers to accessing primary and emergency care in the NHS as has been described as one of the greatest challenges facing people seeking sanctuary. Now, these barriers include difficult experiences of interpreting and translation. And these challenges included the lack of availability of interpreters, use of family and friends or other non-professionals as interpreters because there are very, there's very clear guidance from uh, the UNHCR that you shouldn't use uh, family or, um, of, or friends as interpreters because it, it creates um, challenges in communication. And also uh, sometimes people use children, so it, it's, it's not appropriate to put that burden on them. And there are of course differences in dialect between the patients and the interpreters and the inter uh, and interpreters can also be unsuitable in age or gender. So perhaps you require a certain level of emotional um, uh, maturity, or uh, perhaps needs to belong to a certain gender if, some, if somebody is not comfortable talking about some uh, private problems. So when they were working on uh, the year one, which was the health experiences of refugees and asylum seekers in Wales, they came across one situation which uh, about a 12 year old Syrian refugee who had been referred to the hospital to repair dam damage caused by a bullet wound. Her parents had not been provided with a translator and were not aware what was going to happen during the visit. Consent to operate was taken from the child and the parents were very distressed about this incident, which is quite understandable considering it, it is unethical to bypass the parents especially when uh, the child is 12 years old. 
So here are some um, quotes from um, the project which highlighted some needs for uh, some of the challenges that occur um, when accessing interpretation services in the NHS. I hope my voice isn't too soft. It's fine. I hope. Um, yeah. Sounds good to me, Rabia. I think we, we're all yeah hearing okay. you loud and clear. Lovely. Okay, thank you. So the first is I asked for an interpreter and they didn't help, and the help didn't come in till seven p.m. time. Then my friends say they find it difficult with interpretation services. Some languages are hard to find. For example, Tigrinya. There are so many young Tigrinian refugees. Train them. Third person, they're not good enough, the interpreters. They need to be trained from very specific health issues. Having an interpreter really helps. I am happy with this service. I would like to say the service, very interesting for me because most people didn't understand and explain their own problem. I have a problem on telephone because of hearing aid. So I don't understand uh, on the phone properly. As you can see, these are a variety of issues that go from training of interpreters to access within certain timeframes and uh, to access, access to say the kind of language and also um, uh, issues with uh, technology. So our year two project, which specifically focuses on interpretation, is actually based on two questions. And these are the two research questions. We're looking into the experiences of asylum seekers and refugees with language needs when they seek healthcare within primary and emergency healthcare settings in Wales. And uh, based on the kind of results that we get, we will also try to see that is it feasible to carry out a UK wide evaluation of interpretation services in these healthcare settings to improve policy and practice. So there are a number of ways in which we are actually addressing these questions. There are surveys of asylum seekers and refugees, there are surveys of health board commissioners, so for example, people who actually commission um, uh, interpretation services. There is exploration of data sources, which includes uh, quality, um, completeness and scope for data linkage. And there are of course, qualitative interviews with asylum seekers as well. In order to give um, all of this, all of these research questions and the findings that we're going to have a bit of a, st a structure, we decided to conduct a stakeholder workshop to develop a logic model. Model. So, for the uninitiated, what is a logic model? So, a logic model is a graphic which represents the theory of how an intervention produces its outcomes. I'll explain that in the next slide uh, further. So basically what we were trying to understand is that if we have an effective or if we have an interpretation service, which represents a key components of what is going on when people access primary emergency care using interpretation services. So if you see this diagram, usually, I mean, logic models have a lot of different um, uh, components, but this is the most simple way uh, I can, this is the most simple diagram. And in this, as you can see, there are four components, inputs, activities, mechanisms, outcomes, and context. The input is, what do I need? So for example, resources like money, uh, um, uh, ring, uh, ring fence staff time. What are the activities? Like, what do I do? And mechanism. How does that intervention work? That's the second question that you try to answer. And the third is outcome and impact. So outcome, what happens when all of these things, uh, the inputs and the activities happen? And impact, what are my goals? What am I trying to achieve over here? And these um, outcomes may not always be positive. Sometimes they're unintended negative outcomes as well. So we created this figure which presents the key components of what's going on when people access primary or emergency care. And this data can be used to help explain how the intervention works to achieve its outcomes or sometimes why it doesn't work. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> so here, I'm sharing the method in which we use to uh, develop this logic model, and I'll share the diagram in the next um, slide. We conducted an online stakeholder event with 30 people. Sorry? Sorry? I think you're okay. Carry on, yeah. 
We conducted an online stakeholder event with 30 people from Wales and England, including patients and professional staff involved in commissioning, planning and delivering interpretation services in the NHS. Five mixed groups undertook three activity sessions in breakout rooms because they were online, so you can imagine on Zoom, for about 20 minutes um, each, facilitated by a research uh, team member from Swansea University or Public Health Wales. And each activity session actually focused on one question um, uh, uh, based on an initial draft of the logic model. Inputs, as you remember, what do I do? So what is needed to provide an interpretation service? Mechanism of change? How do you think an interpretation service works for an asylum seeker or refugee? Outcomes, what difference does it make to have an interpretation services? service? Responses were recorded by a note taker, aggregated, and used as a basis for developing the logic model. Now, uh, this is the logic model we created. I appreciate there's a significant amount of information here, but I will systematically break this down. First of all, we have the context. What is the context in which um, effective interpretation service actually takes place. So we have the settings which we chose, which uh, were GP practices, GP out of hours, hospital emergency departments, urgent care centers, and whether they were urban or rural, this was something that was taken into context, and whether they had other migrants. So for example, non-asylum seeker refugee population or locality who also require interpretation services. Then we have the inputs, what do I do? So here we said the core things that we actually need for developing the interpretation service. Sorry, I'll just take one minute more. I realize that it's 1547. So core, the things that we actually need are trained interpreters, fluent and required languages and dialects with an understanding of health and medical issues. There's a process of requesting interpreters. So client requests and identifying need, a system, an appropriate system for accessing and booking interpreters at a time required, awareness amongst patients and families, and also amongst clinicians of interpretation support and how to request it. This was one of the surprising findings that a lot of GPs don't know how to access interpretation service. And then there's funding the most important thing sometimes, and the quality standards, what kind of standards are you trying to match up to and a system for monitoring and using feedback, sufficient time to allow for consultations, what kind of technology is available to do, uh, deliver interpretation services, and training for interpreters, clinical staff, receptionists, strategic commitment to quality of access by healthcare organizations, and the variables, something that can differentiate between different service is contact face-to-face -face by telephone, by video, commercial provider, third sector trained volunteer, pre-booked spontaneous um, access to interpretation and interpreter, interpreter of requested gender. Here we have predicted mechanism of change, which is communication is possible at the time required. Predicted mechanism of changes, how do we think it's actually working? So relationship of trust created between patient, clinician and interpreter, accurate communication and full information on symptoms and needs for the patient to the clinician, and accurate communication and full of non-clinical information. So for example, worries, anxieties, fears and assurances. As you can appreciate, um, the therapeutic uh, consultation involves sharing a story a story about your illness, about what you're struggling with, and till the time you have the right kind of or language um, or a person helping you, you can't communicate that story. I mean, doctors try very hard to break this all down into symptoms, but there is more to that. There is a lot in between, and everyone I'm sure has not been well at certain points in their lives can actually appreciate that. So the intended outcomes, as we all expect, is increased patient satisfaction, increased confidence amongst patients, increased health literacy amongst patients, sense of worth that the patient has been heard, and needs resolved at first contact when possible, and delivery of safe patient care, and reduction in cancel or abandoned appointments, and reduction in complaints, and more efficient patient flow. Unintended outcomes, creation of additional healthcare demand, cost, time demands on clinicians, uh, support staff arranging waiting for interpreters, lengthier consultation time, delays to care, possible breach of confidence, embarrassment, inaccurate conveyance of information, and distress to interpreter dealing with difficult situations. This is my last slide. Uh, 
So implications, here we have the interpretation services are an underdeveloped area of provision of primary and emergency care for sanctuary seekers. There's a variation in accessibility and funding for interpretation services in the NHS. However, our work to develop a logic model helps to provide a firm foundation for prioritizing and structuring data collection and analysis to explore the main aspect of effective interpretation service and relationships between them. So, and, um, in the end, I wanted to share a few verses by Mahmoud Darvish, who's a Palestinian poet, for his friend Edward Said. Uh, this is uh, Mahmoud Darvish, and that's Edward Said. And it's called Edward Said, A Contrapuntal Reading. I have two languages, but I have forgotten which is the language of my dreams. I have an English language for writing with yielding phrases and a language in which heaven and Jerusalem converse with a silver cadence, but it does not yield to my imagination. Thank you for your time. And I'm sorry for going over um, any queries about here too. Please email me at this address. And I'm happy to share my slides as well. Lovely. Thank you very much, Via. And um, a very um, yeah, emotive and effective ending as well with, with that verse. I'm sure something a lot of us can can relate to in, in some way or another. Um, that's uh, another fantastic uh, presentation. Felly, mae'n gyfle i chi nodi cwestiynau yn uh, blwch. Mae gynna ni uh, ychydig o amser i uh, ymateb um, falle yw ni dros yr awr uh, ti hwnt i ddau o'r gloch rhyw fymryn gan y bynnu faint sydd i drafod. Uh, oedd yn taro fi wrth rando uh, ar y ddau gyflwyniad yna yn bod ni mewn ffordd yn sôn am bwnc sydd yn cysylltu uh, gyda um, un o'r sesiynau sydd i ddod uh, prawn ma ynghylch llonyddwch fewnol ac efallai fod rhyw faint o hyn yn ymwneud gyda ceisio sicrhau uh, llonyddwch yna i'r bobl uh, mwy a bregus yn ein cymdeithas um, ac yn hynny o beth just i nodi un sylw gan uh, einir yn, yn y blwch um, sydd efallai yn Yeah, try and salute at group Vregas Arash, my great Dioch and Vaur, to greet all through Beth Felhini V, Pamanin Bim with Oiden and Respectin Senesi, and he des in a mochia boid, doid and idim and de are sisneg, demond yes and no. But try to be a brovi, get a thy ire a ma, to in cover of El Patai and Voy and Cam Gemeriade, the Guidod. Demond am our deed, get a nose or Fieni and Callum Weld are a preed. Ac uh, fel yn gweud falle bod hwnna yn tynnu'n sylw ni at grŵp arall uh, bregus yn dyfed yn i wedi trafod, wrth gwrs, hen oed yn wedig rhai sydd â um, dementia ac wrth gwrs, um, y sawl sydd yn ceisio lloches. Um, ie, yeah, mae'n a, um, ie, yeah, fel yn gweud, uh, prif rhwch eich cwestiynau mewn yn y blwch. Os gai falle ofyn un cwestiwn fel y, y cader yn, yn gyntaf, um, sydd falle a gwedd gwahanol i, i'r ddwy ohonach chi. Um, Mae ci destun falle o, o bwys fynyn, a ond i jyst eisiau gofyn i'r ddwy o chi faint o chi'n teimlo bod y ci destun Cymraeg yn dylanwadu ar y drafodaeth a beth sy'n digwydd hynny o beth fi'n deall o ran tai um, gofal. Mae yna elfen yn dois o y bod yr Y dywydiant yna os rydych chi wedi cael eu join breifet i, i rade a ni gweld defnydd yr term service user yn yr adborth yn angharad. Ac ond i jyst ar dyddordeb ynghylch tywydd sut mae falle'r cydestyn yna a ffordd yn ni yn falle trafod yn gyffredinol uh, nad i'r gofal yng Nghymru wedyn ni yn effeithio ar sut yn ni meddwl am y pethau mwy falle emosiynol diwylliannol yma o gwmpas rhyw beth o defnydd iaith ag os abwynt rhy bea oedd gen i ddiddordeb ynghylch ydych chi'n gweld bod yna gwahaniaeth agwedd yng Nghymru lle dyn ni yn arfel y syniad yma o genedl o noddfa ydy yr delfyd yna o gwbl yn cael unrhyw fath o ddylanwad ar y profiad uh, ceisio lloches. Um, Mae'n un o'r ddau gwestiwn yn dod trwyddo yna ar felly gallwn ni droi at yn nhw mewn munud, ond falle jyst um, gair ar hwnna i ddechrau. Angharad, dwi'n i ddim mosgu oh. tiau, Mateb. Ie, yeah, diolch hyw. Um, a sbwys, yn y cydest yn Cymraeg, mae rhaid i cofio fod Cymraeg yn iaith swyddogol yng Nghymru, sy'n mod yn i'r ddeddf iaith y sefoniaeth. Mae yna disgwyliadau ar y mudiadau a dar parwyr gofal yng 
Um, and I'm going to go to the Kanghenian with the Bible. I'm going to go to the Kanghenian with the Bible. I'm going to go to the Kanghenian with the Bible. I'm going to go to the Kanghenian with the Bible. So, I'm going to go to the Kanghenian with the Bible. I'm going to go to the Kanghenian with the Bible. Ond ie, pan i meddwl am wedi yn cartrefu gofal, a ti'n sôn mae'r sector wedi preifateidio, ma wedi preifateidio, ond dwi'r cyfrifoldeb heb cael ei preifateidio. So mae'r cyfrifoldeb dal yn cael ei ddal gyda wedi'r dod eich leol a'r comisiynwyr o fewn byrdau iechyd, a mae dyn ni yn y corff um, o arolygu gofal Cymru, Cair Inspectorate Wales, mae dyn nhw safonau disgwyliadau. So, so er bod yna'n cymryd y preifat a rhai o'n nhw yn darparu gwasanaethau dros prydain i gyd a rhai yn, 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 yn ehangach beth, ma dan i hawliau yng Nghymru fel siaradwyr Cymraeg i cael ein anghenio ni eithyddol dim dopyd â. Mwys fo hwnna'n ateb the question. Ydy, ydy, sicr diolch yng Ngharad. Um, but I don't know if you have any... Uh... Yeah, comments on that uh, question of um, context and uh, the perhaps comparative element between maybe England and Wales. So, um, I think the question that you asked was a very interesting one, and then Harriet gave a, an excellent response. And I think the commodification of culture and our society is, is a broader debate that definitely we all have, I definitely have a lot of opinions about. But if we were to take that capitalist approach and um, then, you know, uh, if they want happy customers or clients, then they need to provide them with what they need. And um, that's pretty much the end of the day and uh, you know that there are there's competition there are other care providers there are other social care providers that can perhaps give them a better deal or better services then they'll probably just go there so i think there's a lot of incentive for them to improve their services whether this is the thought process that we should be taking and this is how we should be viewing things that that's that's definitely another conversation Sorry if I moved off the... No, no, not at all. Thanks, Rhea. I've got a follow-up question, I think, more specifically for, for you here from Arad Eirig. Um, you mentioned in your presentation that uh, finance is often the sort of the bottom line. Uh, and Arad is asking the question uh, around who perhaps should be paying for the suggested translation service. Um, is this a, a cost to be borne perhaps by the health board or are you looking at something more central that's taken on by the by the Welsh Government. Do, do you have any thoughts in that respect? So, um, that's a very, it's a really great question. And I think, and it definitely it depends on which country, which one of the four nations you're actually sitting in, because the way interpretation services are divided up is very different. In Wales, we have the Welsh Interpretation Translation Services, which provide uh, translation services or interpretation services to the health boards, as well as to social care. So they do, the Welsh government is actually really good about this in terms of uh, that they do provide the service to people who are coming in contact with the primary care, uh, uh, primary care and emergency providers. It's just that there's an excellent service, but a lot of people uh, don't know how to use it or perhaps don't consider it important enough. So that's, that's where the intervention perhaps needs to come in. The funding, when I was mentioning that, that goes in different ways, right? I mean, the funding can be, so the interpreters, so for example, in Wales, they're all um, in, uh, independent agents. So they're not employed by the government, they're, they're independent, but it, it, there's a corporate sector involved as well, uh, language line, big word, et cetera. And so they're independent. And, uh, but for them to uh, get the kind of training that they need, or maybe even to move up certain standards. So for example, you need a specific qualification to translate or interpret for the police, or you might need a specific qualification to interpret for somebody in a, in a psychiatric setting. That costs a lot, like 2000 pounds or something. So those are the things that maybe we need to think about, like where does that bursary come from? Oh, wait, if they, we need a bursary for that and where the funding for that comes from. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's, that's a very helpful, helpful answer there. I, I've got a, a couple of more questions. Um, one perhaps more spe specific for you, Rabia, and then the, a sort of general um, question for from um, Marelic. But Anne Griffith is asking an interesting question here, which maybe takes us beyond the scope of um, the presentations, but it's a question about teaching 
modern languages in schools and whether there might be more attention given to the possibility of teaching non-European languages as a second or third languages in our school. I don't know if you or perhaps on Harald have a response on that. I think it's an interesting one really in terms of, you know, the well, the well-documented issues we have in terms of take-up of languages generally in secondary schools, and maybe there's a whole cultural sort of uh, phenomenon or um, issue to be sort of um, discussed there as well. I don't know if you have any um, comments on that, Rivea. Well, um, from a personal point of view, yes, that would be amazing if people can learn different languages. I mean, Languages open up such a different world to us, isn't it? I mean, everyone, mostly everyone over here is bilingual. You know, you how you feel and think in different languages is so different. And oh, absolutely, that would be fantastic if I could. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm all on board for that. Yeah. I think there is something there. Oh, please, I have that. Yeah. So I was going to say, if I could just come in. Yeah. Even if we couldn't teach a third language, I think what we should be teaching and embedding in people is a kind of cultural competence. So recognizing that other people have different cultural views of the world and different language needs and sort of linguistic humility really and cultural humility recognize that there's more than one way. And if we could teach that in schools uh, or teach that through the workplace, that would go a, a long way towards yeah. improving people's quality of life when they're vulnerable. Um, I pointed all of it down and I, and Harad, I mean, but then in Katina, I saw point there and Greif to him seem to give. Now, some of the other fellow previous scholar had well a thrown it, but the other day, my organi and er travelled and now come past be through life. I can am all young and team law board can bobble. So now coming just Ben or be through life. Had just for the for the of a Fabia to be more. Yeah, he boni was there and Carlos could see hang a can and in a be through life. I think that the ice palmer, um, yeah, Gavoy Thog, ah, Fusiga di Ice or Sabu Pobag with on Buid, Mine and Ovach, where the Nivasse, Guthior again, Dar and the Ravenna Moya Marvero, and just where the Nior Fengeda Salu Gan Mered, seething medal and Cassati Gada, Bithok and Great Van Angharad, Mered Gada Sawa Nordi or Anna Cricklum Newith. Uh, a bead pop a scum and a guid or a board the ski ice ring ladle and a gustal, uh, as a snake or a gum rag on the uh, come well in the way. Uh, and the mass salu, uh, mered, um, in your fenevo, a sconachi matib, a gore gore off in the way. Ring derbin with them reddit, headoch, put headoch on him and cavilio arakavan at headoch menol. On the bed, a square siama or on headoch a level glad a bead heavied. A new pussy derbin. Bod ieithoedd gwahanol gan bobl wahanol, a bod, gan, bod angen gwrandon astud ar fynegiant yr ieithoedd hynny er mwyn i ni ddeall yn gilydd. Weithiau, does dim digon o ddealltwriaeth o greft yr uthrol a sensitif y cyfieithydd. A mi allan ni weud hefyd am ni os a bwynt eich um, cydestyn penodol chi angharad, falle digon o ddealltwriaeth o greft a phwysigrwydd yr gallu yna i gynnag gynnu gofal and we thought an achos towards a snigger gumrag. Ava the Hima read it and go in Ava the Hin, Katino, and Gafredino Gadar, yeah, Gadar Puntian, and Mamma read it and Kanig. And Hara, don't need the most of a Hima, the Pinta. Then, yeah, agreed to in Katino and Soil, whatever, or for being Nade a slazy or Kablunia, Mamma, be brawny pal, Kalin, or Tour Barbella, sit us in a shell, Prani Bobble, this young lady would have remained with Fuguhan or Mohonan. Cray, got a cray hair, a free strap. A dim of a dim for drost in all, on my own. Yeah, nothing to do in metal feast. And I do to continue on. Um, Sawyer Amarad, I will enjoy a park, not to get in kid then. I can cut now, but to see how you in person. The Mongorvod, I'm Gormessi, how you in Arash, but any geared how you in the Golian, I'm going to be sick of when he gets and cut now, but in the Golian, a quells in the Golian. Online, small pie, I know Sharad, on Gweld Noor. Rebea, I don't know if you'd like to share any more thoughts uh, as we draw the draw the discussion to a close. I think uh, you and, and Harold and Meredith gave a fantastic summary to the issues here that instead of, I mean, see, I come from Pakistan and um, 
for and that means you know we went through 1947 and there was the partition and everything and there was an active attempt to suppress local languages by the colonizers and by sub subsequent governments and it's so important to have your own language even the united nations says that children when they're learning um, at school should ha have the language that they speak at home to learn um, I said learn twice, but okay, you get the point. And um, sorry, so that's it, that instead of lang using language to become more insular, I absolutely agree with Anhar that we need to use that to open up, you know, ourselves to the different experiences of people around us. But of course, you know, this is pr one problem with cultural competence, I guess, can be that Sometimes people put people in boxes, oh, they speak certain languages and hence they have a certain approach. But um, but just like pushing that even aside, but you know, whatever you said about individuality and focusing on the individual and their humanity, and uh, that's it. Sorry, I think I'm just repeating what you said. You said it perfectly. <laughs> oh, well, it's good that we have an element of, uh, yeah, agreement across the panel. And yeah, thank you for the, for, for the for the talk uh, from yourself Rabia, and from you and how it's been really interesting provocative session Dioch and Val Rion Thy West I are Dumel Bill and Kamrid to um yeah Eggwell Bach Sadinaudi I'll um I mean I'll hot already die yeah man who came in it. Dina mean it do the need your mound when hen or had with the Andron and I guess for hat jills in Cadero Sashonessa. I got you he know right good he a Dr. Hees Bevan Jones I don't Francis Williams. Now, the idea was that Tantia I came in it with the other man that came on Saturday and on Saturday, but he ma am Saturday Danny. But he's a Christian and he got paned. Now he arose and Mara got on the road and met the real person to go with. On Gauni Doriad, but how are the wife can I kill? Came with the idea that we would join. I want to show the couple easy. Or had the other person been not done when he netto your colleague came right and it lit all. Or with my new teammate in Boston, but he can all the good idea will he trust the way. Um, uh, and the uh, Hinan and Beth go Brennan and Privis Goliani. Well, we're down a day in Escavino, do much for Vine took an ad leather, Sindig with our draws do we eyes and get them settled. But he deal him and he had deal him in one of Yeah, great. <laughs>